Hi, it's Mark from Top Local. I'm here with Simon Kelly. He's a physiotherapist at InSync Physio in Vancouver, one of Vancouver's favorite physiotherapist clinics, many time winners of Best Physio in Vancouver. And Simon is going to talk to us today about frontal hip pain. Hip pain, this is really common. So what causes this kind of hip pain in the front of your joint? Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I just talk about hip pain sort of a little bit globally. And again, I might bring in certain clients that I saw recently as well, like a case study. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that can cause hip pain, to be honest, Mark. So this guy in particular just came in and had pain in the front of his hip. No real specific injury as such kind of came on more more gradually. So we dug into history of like how it came on and he said he had it, I think, mid-November. So that would have been two months ago from when we recorded this video. But he took a break. He was actually doing a lot of Nordic cross skating, which I wasn't really aware of what that was. But I think it's it's almost like you're on little wheels like you're kind of scaling but on ground actually maybe you know what that is Mark but I, I never heard of it being from Ireland but he explained it in good detail but he was doing a lot more of that and he was doing a lot more rowing he was telling me and then he did feel the pain coming on but he just kind of continued for a while then he stopped and then the pain didn't go away and then he landed in my office here or in my clinic here so you know the first thing like because it was more gradual in nature, you wouldn't be sort of thinking more like a grind strain. It might be overworked or chronic use of the grind, but we'd have to kind of rule out the grind, which we kind of do in clinic where you squeeze the knees together. And if there's no pain on that, you're kind of pretty sure it's not a grind. But even the mechanism of injury, it's unlikely to be a grind. You know, you usually get that in lots of changing of direction. It does have a bit of changing of direction in that, actually. You further made it more detailed in how this classical where you just kind of go straight with these wheels are just kind of more lateral as he describes so the lateral movement was really making it worse according to him so that was kind of interesting to see why that was worse for him so he came into clinic we had a look at the front of it he kind of pointed to the front of his hip not to the side of his hip and it was more painful at night time when he was lying on that side so that's kind of how he presented it so we cleared the grind. Obviously, we did the squeeze test where the knees were squeezing together. That was all clear. And then we kind of checked his hip flexors. So you have ilioso, that's the name of your hip flexors, and you have rectus femoris, which is actually one of your quads that also crosses the hip joint, and it assists in hip flexion as well. So in the clinic here, he had a little bit of pain when he was completing that movement on hip flexion. And when we started to palpate the front of the hip, and you have two bony nodules on the front of your hip, just a little bit below that. He had a lot of pain in there. So he was also stiff in his hip as well. And he was a little bit older. He's 50 years old. So he, he has a bit of stiffness in his hip. But this is definitely, I think, an overuse injury of the muscle called rectus femoris. Um, just from lots and lots and lots of hip flexion. There's a lot of hip flexion. Here. And then he was trying to alternate to something else, which was rowing, which was also lots of that hip flexion he also was stretching the life out of his hip flexors as well so the muscle was, was really getting no time to kind of recover or heal so i think he just needed a bit of education really i think he was concerned it hadn't gone away in two months so my job is to get out the aggravating factors just tell him stop rolling stop stretching the life out of his hip and just maybe cool down on that nordic cross skating just for a week till i settle it so that's what we done just to start. Um, and then we obviously just loaded up the hip a little bit more, but more gradually. Because um, it is chronic, it wasn't specific. And some of the chronic stuff can take a little bit longer to heal. Like it is a chronic tendinopathy. So you're probably looking at maybe sometimes take two to three months. But if, if it's done right, we can introduce it a little bit earlier. So we loaded up his hip flexors and we did a couple of exercises just to build up that muscle and the hip. We avoided sort of a lot of this aggravating factors for two or three weeks. And then we started to add it in gradually. And uh, he's actually, after making a pretty good recovery now, and he's happy that it's not a hip osteoarthritis. So he's back doing his Nordic cross skating now. And I think he's back up to three or four times a week. So with no pain. So that was great. Well, hopefully he puts the skis on and gets out on the snow, which is really what that's training for. I've had this injury 
from cross country oh, skiing, but it was from wax failing, going uphill, hard uphill, and st overstretching the rectus yes. femoris. And Absolutely. That, so, well, did he have any crepitus in his hip? He didn't actually, no, he had no crepitus in his hip. He was very tight in his hips now, and I'd imagine we all get a little bit of osteoarthritis as we get older, but certainly he wasn't symptomatic or had no clicking or popping or crepitus. That was good. I think that really eased his mind. I think he kind of thought it was the start of hip osteoarthritis, so he was kind of relieved that it was. I say just that muscle. It's important, but maybe it is better not to have hip osteoarthritis as well. But you're right, Mark, you can get it. More of the acute injuries, his was more chronic from lots of hip flexion. Some of the more acute injuries, you know, snowboarders, when they lean back, they can really overstretch that muscle. Kind of like what you were saying, when you're really doing a lot of uphill and stretching back, you can injure it that way too, for sure. Yeah. So, so what was the treatment protocol? What would be more of a typical thing if somebody had this kind of overuse injury in, to their rectus femoris or their front of their hip? Absolutely, Mark. Yeah. So what we did with him, actually, we a lot of the time it can be just tightness in the quad muscle, actually. So we just worked out that muscle with a lot of massage, some needling, like IMS treatment or dry needling. It's called that because there's nothing in the needle, obviously. But we just reset the muscle and make sure it's long enough. And really, again, it's all about education and just you're overloading this muscle just too much in the amount that you're doing. He really wanted an alternative, something alternative to do. If he couldn't do the Nordic cross skating because obviously he's probably training. Someone who does this is usually really eager to get onto the snow <laughs> and he didn't want to lose any sort of cardiovascular stuff as well. So I mentioned a little bit of biking to him and a bit of cross trainer if he could, but just really try to limit. <laughs> um, I avoided rowing as well. Just too much hip flexion in that. I think he was just going too aggressive, weekend warrior type character. <laughs> so he was happy to just do a bit of bike for a while, but it was, it was hard to reel him in to avoid the rowing and, and that cross skating. And then, yeah, we just loaded him up here in clinic as best he could. And uh, yeah, he's no pain at night time now and he's back doing his Nordic cross skating now and he's looking forward to getting back into the slopes. He can do that now too. Absolutely. So if you've got some hip pain, the guy to see is Simon Kelly. You can reach him at InSync Physio in Vancouver at the Canby Street office. You can call to book your appointment, 604-566-9716, or check out the website, insyncphysio.com. Real easy to book right there online. If you're in Burnaby, they have a Burnaby office, 604-298-4878. Same thing, you can book online there. Pick from whichever physiotherapist you want. You can choose Simon. He's busy and he's good at what he does. Insyncphysio.com. Thanks, Simon. Cheers, Mark. Thanks very much.